Get ready for a web of creativity where music, painting, poetry, photography, fashion, and design collide in the most incredible ways. Join us on a journey of discovery and inspiration. In our dance of life, we're born as art. Each one a canvas, a unique part. Colors blend and stories of influences. We live in the moments, moments of continuous. Breath strokes of passion, sculpting our fate in the rhythm of living. We create a painter's palette, a poet's rhyme. Art is in every form, but we fail to realize its norm. Our life's a masterpiece of visual art, melodies and design, each playing its part. All four seasons in cold night, we still arise, painting our dreams high, high in the sky. When dance meet music, we never really embrace the sight. Any artist's soul, a relentless fight. What we've seen and where we come from, collaborations far from a la carte. So in the end, we are all creators of art. But no need to worry, we are all subconsciously doing our part. This is Connecting Art Forms. Greetings and welcome to Connecting Art Forms. I'm your host, John Henry. Today we have a very special guest joining us, a creative who's brought a unique perspective to the art scene here in Milwaukee, Brandon Dominique. It's an honor to have you here today. Thank you, John. It's an honor for me be just being here. Yes, indeed, indeed. Milwaukee born and raised. Yes, sir. Brandon, can you share with us a bit about your upbringing in Milwaukee and how it shaped your path to where you are today? Oh, man. Um, growing up in Milwaukee for me was a lot of fun, um, especially during the summers, uh, you know, playing sports and um, spending all your money or your mom's mm -hmm. money at the gas stations and uh, the summer jobs and mm -hmm. the heat, the, the lake, all of those things. Um, I just vividly remember growing up here. So just being from the north side and like I mentioned before, my first job uh, was a caddy actually, mm -hmm. um, working at a country club. So uh, a lot of the golfers, they wore some pretty nice stuff and that's how I kind of got um, a taste of uh, threads and fashion and putting things on that coordinate. And you've been around a bit. Um, what was the moment that you realized you wanted to bring your talents back to Milwaukee? Mm. Um, so I grew up here and left when I was 18 uh, for college and um, I moved first to Baltimore, mm. so the East Coast and got a, a taste of that culture as far as like the sneaker culture and how they wore things and different brands that they wore. And then um, I moved to Ohio where I went to a HBCU in college and um, I was doing fashion shows and networking with different people around the United States that were all my age and we were just doing really cool stuff in college uh, just for fun. So it, it became my passion. And um, after doing that for a few years, it was important for me to bring that back home. You know, it all starts back home. So in 2013, I decided to pack up everything that I've learned in my experiences and bring it back to Milwaukee to see yeah. how people will resonate with, with my creativity. Yeah, I'm glad that you did. I traveled a bit myself and uh, I'm back here and enjoying it. Yes. Um, I'm looking forward to learning more about what you're doing in the community. But first, let's check out how two amazing art forms intersect as we explore some of the creative processes with hip hop artist Genesis Renji and contemporary artist Nehemiah Edwards, AKA Nemo. My creation process, it, it, it starts off with an idea of what I would like to express. I always do like a small mock-up before I, before I create the, the larger piece. So there's like sketch, I have a you know, sketchbook of like all the pieces that I've created that just on smaller scales uh, and then proceed from there. But it all starts with a message. It's about what do I want to tell people? Like what's important for me to get out? What message do I want to, to share with the world? And that's also why I do art period. It's all about helping others through my art. And that's why it's, I consider it my purpose work now because it all boils down to truly helping others. <laughs> you know, we're all, we're all on the same journey, you know, and we all ultimately want the same things at the very end of the day, which is to be loved, which is to be cared for, to be understood, to be accepted for who we truly are, 
that is that's what connects us all we all desire that this was the piece that i created that started that that angel demon sort of uh, concept that that the angel demon motif in my works uh, this was the piece so i painted the background first uh, background is all acrylic and uh, i had nothing on it at first and i didn't know what i wanted to do with the piece i just knew that i wanted uh, a piece with a big blue background <laughs> and i'm like what do i do what do i do here one of my first and foremost primary influences as a visual artist is john michel basquiat uh, he was the the, the, the one that I gravitated to as soon as I started to learn about the arts world. Um, and it wasn't until 2017 is when I actually started to explore painting as a creative outlet to begin with. One of the most pivotal experiences was my exhibition at St. Kate. Uh, it was actually my first solo exhibition. So the first time I've had just my own work in a particular space was at the St. Kate uh, Arts Hotel. And um, it was for the duration of around five to six months. I got a chance to connect with so many individuals. It was, I stayed there, I just lived there because they're like, you know, my art's here, I'm gonna just show up all the time and, and connect with whoever I can connect with and show them the space. Like, hey, you know, let's go, let's go see. And I get a chance to express really all art is connected. And I, well, one, I believe everything is art, honestly. Uh, there's not a thing that you could lay your eyes on that isn't creative. And that, as a matter of fact, I like to use the word creativity or creation as opposed to art because when you use those words it uh, people it's more inclusive I'll put it that way when people think art they sometimes think just the the arts in the um, traditional formats such as the the visual arts or the literary arts or the uh, performing arts um, but I believe everyone really is an, is an artist in their own right My genre is hip hop, rap. It's been that for the, you know, a good majority of my career. I like to dabble with R&B every now and then, get the, the melodies going. And I flirt with electronic music every now and then too. I get inspired by, by people a lot and just the different things that they can bring and offer. Growing up, my parents, of course, biggest influences. My brothers, big influences on me. Trying to set an example for them, but then also learning so much from my brothers as well. My cousin Pierre, that got me into music. Uh, musically, the influences came. My family, we used to watch Temptations like almost every Sunday. When it comes to connecting the music outside of just the music and making it live in other art forms, that's the that's probably the most important part once you get done making the actual music, is how are we gonna let this thing exist outside of just the sonic sound that we've given it, right? Me, the visual element for me is, is gonna go over into the cover art you see, or, and it'll show up in whatever videos we might come up with. So, um, Marty Gransberry, AKA Freakish Nerd, uh, my shooter, creative director, he has a great way of bringing whatever little ideas I have visually to life, and then captivating and expanding on that and making it bigger than what I imagine. Problem always do the same, when you wanna change, but you know that that is long. Still you go and not your way just to make a name cause you know regret is all. Nobody can do it all on their own. It's been times where I've tried to do as much as I can by myself and that can only get you so far. Like the more you collaborate and then learn to delegate, the further you'll get, especially if you're trying to be a part of something, regardless of the field, for a long time, you are gonna need a very solid support system and team around you to help not only carry you, but push you um, at the times when it's needed and to help, you know, take some of that weight off your shoulders. You have to work a lot harder just to find something that, to stand out from everybody else. And then we in the middle of the country already. So we get the influences of so many people that gotta come through the Midwest. So you get in these pieces and, and, and style points from all these different parts of the country, but then you still gotta cook it up and make it your own thing and make it unique while cutting against the grain. You know, we in a city that doesn't, isn't necessarily immediately thought of as a music city or a bigger city. And as we're growing it and figuring that out, that's playing its part in the music as well. Like, gotta grow and adapt with the city, the sound, the styles, but then also the speed of it all, like being able to deliver. And that's something that I'll bring into my music as well.
but an incredible blend of creativity between two individuals who are extremely talented. Brandon, how'd you feel seeing those two gentlemen who you know very well? Yeah, um, it was really cool seeing those two uh, passionate brothers um, and also just their process. You know, I respect not only the art and the end result, but their process is very intricate. Um, and I'm lucky enough, like you said, to, to know them and have them in my personal network. Yeah. Worked with Genesis a bunch and Nemo hopefully soon. Yeah, indeed. And you provide a platform for artists like that mm -hmm. with Breakfast with Champions, which yes, I would absolutely. like to talk about. So. Um, uh, since we got a chance to talk to you and get to know you, let's talk more about Breakfast with Champions. Could you give more details about the inspiration behind it? Yeah, I was inspired with Breakfast with Champions as a youngster. Yeah. Uh, growing up watching music videos, Hype William videos, and my favorite artists, whether it was, you know, like DMX or yeah. Rockefeller, um, Pharrell and Kanye West, yeah. all of these artists and their style, how they were shot, um, it inspired me to kind of in my adulthood bring that those same ideas that um, 106 in Park and Rap City yes. showcased in our community to Milwaukee yeah. and shed a spotlight on the elite creatives here in Milwaukee um, on the digital platform as yeah. well as providing a physical platform which is our social gatherings that I host and coordinate um, centered around uh, these different creative people and yeah. provide a a safe environment for them to come as themselves and um, just enjoy breakfast. Yes. So I provide the, a hot catered quality breakfast and they are able to enjoy that while they again see their favorite artists perform or while they look at art and just um, enjoy the ambiance of creativity and community and inclusion here in Milwaukee. Yeah, that's a really creative platform bringing people together. Absolutely. Somebody like Emmett James, you yeah. know, something like that. That's and I really work cool. with Emmett James. I love Emmett yeah. James, the way yeah. he brings to Milwaukee, his kind of do-it-yourself branding. Um, yeah, yeah. And yeah, it, like I mentioned, just the quality content and the um, intention behind everything. Yeah. He's one of the people that brings that, so. And I like the idea of, of collaboration. I actually wanted to ask you, like, could you tell us more about why it's important to you to have collaboration? Oh, yeah. Um, first, collaboration, I feel, has to be organic, yeah. not forced. Um, timing is everything. Yeah. Um, but collaboration offers different perspectives yeah. for one common goal. So when you um, bring other entities or other people in, it's really recognizing each other's strengths and weaknesses and using yeah. those strengths to each other's advantage. Yeah. Um, and coming together for a common goal. Um, collaboration is very important, and I see it happening more and more um, here in Milwaukee, and I love it. Very true, mm -hmm. very true. Milwaukee's on the rise in so many ways. Yep. Um, what I've seen with Breakfast with Champions, I love that it was multiple mediums and everything. Uh, it wasn't just you know a, a rapper or a singer. It you know was artists and vendors and things like that. For sure. Um, like, like, what is your favorite part of having all of those different people there? Yeah, um, my favorite part is actually the planning process because <laughs> um, it's a bit of a challenge. You can imagine with. Um, pulling together 10 different artists, whether they're DJs or poets yeah. or set designers, um, project managers, um, jewelry um, makers, you yeah. know, there's, there's a lot that goes into coordinating uh, different people at this level when, when it's their art. So okay. timing is everything. And um, my favorite part, again, is just being able to bring different people from different walks of life together. Okay, and that you have done. Breakfast with Champions. So, yeah, since you <laughs> yeah. mentioned things about collaborating, let's check out two more amazing art forms as we show the connection between fashion and photography with fashion designer Carlos Vergara and photographer Rob Ryan. My journey in photography started back in 2011 in high school. Picked up a camera, it was just laying around the house. Um, somehow ended up in my hands. I would take the camera to different events, family events. Somehow I became the camera dude who, you know, does the family videos and stuff. And then from there, it just kind of scaled up, you know, naturally. My inspiration is music, cool artists, and the way that they present themselves and the sounds that they produce. Um, all of these things kind of come together. Movies are a super huge influence on me. Um, 
like Pulp Fiction, Tarantino, uh, Scorsese, you know what I mean? Like all these different fantastic directors, they all influence me in certain ways and how they tell stories and how they present the world as they experienced it. My technical process for my photo shoots involves pre-planning. So I have to conceptualize in my mind what I'm trying to produce. Um, and that depends on the concept. It varies, but my work tends to uh, center around a black woman. Um, so sometimes it'll be me shooting a black model in downtown or in a field or wherever. Why do I create? Well, for me, art is very much tied into the fabric of who I am. If I'm not creating, then I'm not satisfied in life. And if I'm not satisfied in life, I'm not moving forward. So for me, creating is absolutely vital to my well-being. Um, art is in who, how I represent myself, how I dress. I have a very minimalistic style. I only wear black, um, but I wear black in different variations. And for me, it's easier to have you know a few shirts, a few pants, and I just wear that, um, as opposed to having a whole bunch of clothes that I don't really need. So. For me, art is everything. I got it right on my hat. You know, art is literally just who I am. I create photography as an outlet because for me, art and technology, I'm just as much of a computer nerd as I am an artist. So when those two things meet, that's where I'm at. And yeah, art, tech, everything. Anybody starting out, advice that I would give, I would say, don't put too much pressure on your art. Don't rush to try to make it your full-time thing and most importantly have fun make sure you're having fun make sure whatever you're creating gets you going it, it excites you it makes you it you know it gets you into that mode of just motivation and want to do stuff if it's not fun you're not going to enjoy yourself what i do in fashion. I am a creative cultivator. I bring all these creatives to fashion together. I try to create spaces for them. I help young people who have an interest in this industry. I'm also a fashion stylist and a designer. My biggest influences um, in fashion, I would say, I will start with my family first. Uh, very colorful family. They dress up. They celebrate a lot. So dressing up is like a thing that just happened in my family. But what really triggered me to like fashion, it was Fonzworth Bentley, Kanye West, they had took this photo um, at Fashion Week, which I didn't even know what Fashion Week was. I just knew, you know, whatever. Um, I saw that photo and I dressed similar to what they had on. Um, and it wasn't like the traditional way a man dress. So I'm like, yo, this is a thing? I'm on it. So they definitely inspire me. Um, Pharrell inspires me to this day. Pharrell is just the GOAT. Uh, Tyler, the creator, uh, a lot of hip hop artists definitely inspire uh, the way I dress too. Well, what I felt being in fashion was I didn't feel accepted. Uh, and I used fashion as an outlet to express myself. Still trying to like conform to what society <laughs> says a man is or what professionalism is. I just did me. I, I, I made sure that I was authentic to myself, still not knowing what that meant at the time. Milwaukee has. I mean, you have to be, you have to come to Milwaukee to understand Milwaukee, but Milwaukee has definitely influenced a lot of my designs. Uh, we have a brand called The Right Amount of Ghetto. Um, you gotta know what the ghetto looked like in Milwaukee uh, to understand that. It's shapes, it's colors, it's textures. And I think all of those things go hand in hand with each industry, right? So you look at something, you feel something, then you connect with it. That's what I do with fashion. But when I look at artwork, there's some things I look at right now that I could be like, I'm gonna dress in those colors. Those colors inspired me to put this look on. Being the designer, I have the vision. The photographer brings it to life. You have to have some type of chemistry in order to make that happen. Uh, because I've done projects with, with photographers or even videographers, um, and it didn't make sense. They didn't understand what I was saying. They produced what they wanted. But when you have a really good connection, you kind of want what's best for each other. And it's both of y'all brands. So you kind of want to make that make sense with each other. I want to say I people watch. Um, I like to watch what goes on in the world, rather it's a uh, video looking on, you know, Instagram, TikTok or whatever, but literally just going outside looking at things, those things kind of shape my ideal of what I want to design. I have a daisy as my flower for the right amount of ghetto. And 
I wanted something to represent um, like time, how how length, how lengthy something can be. Um, and then when I did research on a daisy, I found out that it's like over 30 different types of daisies. And then I realized it's the one of the longest flowers that live. Wow, two amazing connections. I saw a little bit of Brand, and then I saw you in that video. Uh, and let's talk about Carlos and fashion shows and Milwaukee scene. Yeah, we're super connected. Yeah. Um, we've been locked in for a few years now. We did some fashion shows together and a few projects, and we have a huge project coming up soon this year that's probably going to be the biggest in the city. That's um, cool. So definitely stay tuned for that. But All I'm right. super proud of Carlos um, transitioning. Um, to where he is now from yeah. being a stylist to like a fashion designer and having his own brand. So shout out to him. Yeah, you're, and you're, you're making moves just like that. Can you tell us more about your involvement getting into the fashion industry and maybe some of the fashion shows you've done? Yeah, yeah. My fashion experience dates back to maybe like 2007. Yeah. Um, coming straight out of high school and going to college in Ohio. Um, the school that fall my first year was doing a fashion show and they needed help with behind the scenes so like the curtains and things like that and I noticed that a lot of the girls would sign up for this so I'm like me and my guys were like let's do this <laughs> and um, one day they needed an extra and um, I did, they asked me to model and that's when I began actually modeling before yeah. Submitting my clothes um, or being comfortable enough to submit my clothes and start directing my own fashion shows um, And that grew into me coming back home and doing fashion shows at different universities like Madison yeah. um, Here in the city at different venues and collaborating with people like collaborating with people like Carlos and um, Spearheading uh, yeah. one of the biggest fashion shows in the last few years here. Yeah. So um, It's been a journey yeah. and I look forward to maybe expanding my visions and bringing uh, more elements to fashion shows here in Milwaukee. Yeah. And it's truly like a renaissance of the arts, especially with fashion in Milwaukee right now. Absolutely. And you yourself have, of course, Bricklayers Club. Yeah. Can you tell me about the inspiration behind Bricklayers Club? Yeah, Bricklayers Club, I started a few years after um, college was over, yeah. and I wanted to create something that still had that unity amongst uh, dreamers and people who aspire to be something. Yeah. And I took that inspiration from being at school and kind of like the uh, Black Student Club there yeah. or the different groups that you would hang out with and find commonalities with. So I created this brand. If you think about uh, the greatest monument built to this day is the Great Pyramids. And what yeah. were they built out of? Bricks. Yeah. So if you take that same concept and um, we are the pyramids and what it takes and the work that you have to put in to become this finished project or product, you know, I wanted to make something that collaborated the, um, the, the fabrics of like Ralph Lauren and Brooks Brothers, okay. the brands that I used to work for yeah. in college. Um, and my inspiration from working in the country clubs and yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, just bringing all of my experience together for this, for this concept of a clothing brand that is now going on nine years now, so super proud of where we've become in the growth of Bricklayers Club. Wow, um, great, great explanation. It sounds sounds like you've kind of come full circle, getting to design some of the things you saw from your youth yeah. and uh, spread it in this community that is growing, and uh, it's really exciting to see. I'm sure you see some of the things going on with Milwaukee, and it really impresses you. I'd like to ask you about how things you think have changed from when you were growing up compared to um, like to now just trying to make it as an artist? Yeah, for sure. Um, things are a lot more fast paced now. Yeah. Um, I believe when I was younger, you were able like to take time and enjoy the weather and see the grass and you know, those type of things. And things are just a little bit more organic. But yeah. nowadays things are just so fast and in your face. Um, I think nowadays what has really changed is the amount of information that's available to people. Yeah. You know, growing up, there was a lot of gatekeeping when it came to um, the passions or how to do this with the generation before us, but now I'm in a position to be that generation, to be there for the next generation, yeah. like I needed when I was growing up. So I definitely see that changing or being the biggest difference uh, between yeah. growing up then and growing up now. There's a lot more resources. Um, wow. Okay, well, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on the show, Brandon. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thank you for your time today. I'm looking forward to seeing more of what you're working on in the future. 
And thank you for tuning in to Connecting Art Forms. Remember, art knows no boundaries, and it's through exploring and collaboration that we continue to discover more on our journey. So until next time, keep creating and connecting. Boom. All right, now here's something.